Good morning everyone, and welcome back to the Doodling's Life Hunt series. This is, once again, and I would have said this last time, but it is even more the case this time than the previous recording. This is going to be one of the last recordings that I'm ever going to be doing in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate with the official servers. I have to say that I did obviously um, port my save file, which I will do again once this game is about to go offline just to make sure that it's up to date on my PC, but I did port everything over to PC, and one thing that I did do with the emulated version is I removed the bloom, and it has to be said that now that I'm playing this game without, or sorry, with the bloom, again, after having become used to it, not having bloom, it just looks truly terrible, so I would encourage you guys to not watch any footage of the game without bloom until such time that I'm not going to be recording this anymore. So... Well, this version, you know, on the Wii U. Um, I've been a little bit unwell recently. Uh, that is part of the reason why I haven't been live recently. Um, yeah, the, the reasons for that are twofold. The first was that, you know, for the first week and a half, I was actually really busy. And then just as I was thinking, oh, I'd better start doing some recordings, I became unwell. And it's just one of those things, you know, sometimes, depending on the sickness, sometimes it'll be immediately obvious when I'm recording, and then other times it won't be. Hey, Tarbo's come. Very good to see. That's one casualty of the loss of the servers, that'll be Tarbo's show. He's not, at this stage, convinced that he's actually going to take the time to get the emulated version working, because he doesn't really have a computer that's good enough to emulate games, or at least not games like those. So, yeah, he's expecting to stop playing in general, which therefore, consequently, means that I won't be able to play with him anymore while recording live, so that's a shame. This has a nice amber look to it. It's not, it's more... Well, actually, no, the colour is a little bit more accurately reflected in the webcam than I thought. It actually looks like a... Um, like a very fruity drink. It's because it is. It's a blueberry sour from one of the local brewery... Breweries? Yes. It is a brewery that specializes in blueberries. Blueberries. Blurry. Ugh. Be nice if I could speak. But uh, that was definitely a very funny misspeak. Um, you can tell because I'm laughing so much. But yeah, it's a local brewery and... It's not a particularly good sour beer. I don't like sours, you know. I mean, part of me is thinking, oh, new things, you know. This is such a such a younger generation beverage, which I include myself in that anyway. But I also want to be traditionalist in the things that I consume. So, but, you know, if it tastes good, I don't care, right? But this one is a bit average, um... I don't drink sours all that often. I'll usually have a sour if I go out. You know, I don't bring sours into the home. <laughs> Which is a funny way of describing that. But, um, yeah, this one was actually discounted at my local grocery sh store, so I just got them. So. Decided, why not? The memories will live on forever. It's one of the good things about recording it all, hey? So, what we're actually going to be hunting to start with here, and I'm personally content to depart with three people, especially given the team that we have, um, it's going to be Di Morales, and I'm using a rather boutique, or novel even, loadout for a Di Morales, and that is Awaken with Devil Joe Dual Blades. I don't think I've ever done this before. This is almost like a challenge to depart with a loadout that I've never used before against this monster. I have been successful in this challenge. Uh, to read the chat, I'm going to have to look over that way because I don't actually have my mobile device to monitor the chats this time around. The reason why is because I didn't charge my phone overnight and yeah, it's dead. So I have to use my computer, which is fine. Sometimes that's really prohibitive, but it's not this time around. Yeah, my mobility is not good enough to deal with that attack. At least not right now. God, my buttons are so sticky. Now, 
I would generally advise against departing on a Dire Morales quest with one potion and one mega potion. <laughs> Obviously, I did absolutely nothing to prepare for this hunt, despite the large amount of time that I had available to myself. To actually, to myself. The amount of time that I had available to get ready for this quest was immense, and yet I still didn't do anything to prepare. So this is not good at all. Um, presumably I have max potions, so I can probably make use of those, but it's not good. The solution, obviously, is to just not get hit, but I feel like that's going to happen inevitably at some point or another, so whatever. Let's just be really aggressive and deal as much damage as we can so that we can reduce the length of time that we're going to be spending fighting this monster. Obviously, the less time we spend, the higher the likelihood of me surviving. If things get really dire, <laughs> get it, I might ask for some potions from Tavo, but I'm fine for now, so we won't, uh, we won't worry about it. There's every likelihood that I won't need them. It's not a high likelihood, but the... I suppose what we'll say is that the possibility exists that I won't need them, so let's just... Let's just wait until the need arises. I keep going to look down at my phone, but it's not there. <laughs> I'm a bit used to that. Um, is there anything to mention about um, gaming in general lately? There have been some rumblings about Elder Scrolls 6. I don't know if it's anything substantial. My guess is that it's not anything substantial because I haven't seen anything relating to footage, so I don't know why they're continuing to keep that flame alight. Quite frankly, it went out a long time ago when we received a very lackluster trailer, which was literally just a, okay, it exists, now shut up, from Bethesda. And, um, yeah, that was in 2018. So, yeah, there's still rumblings that you can experience from time to time. Stop it. I feel like sometimes you just get caught in really dumb shit with that attack. It has to do with the wings and the hit hitbox of the wings. It's rather large. I don't think I like these dual blades. I don't like the amount of dragon and I don't like the sharpness. The sharpness is... Uh, unexciting. I also don't think I like using dual blades against this monster. Who would have thought? Um, also in gaming news, Dragon's Dogma 2 came out. And apparently it is absolutely miserably shit on PC. Which is really unsurprising. It's disappointing but unsurprising. I wasn't going to play it anyway. Um, I wasn't against the idea of playing it, generally speaking. It's just that the first Dragon's Dogma... I never actually properly got into, and I think I would like to play that before playing Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, do I have any immediate plans to play the first Dragon's Dogma? No, I do not. So, there you go. Dragon's Dogma was never really going to be on my agenda, neither the first or the second one, but I did note that um, there have been some teething issues with the PC version. I say it's unsurprising because PC game releases over the last three to four years have just been truly terrible. Game developers just don't know what to do with the PC versions of their games. It's sort of an obligatory release at this point. They know that they're going to get money out of it, but they don't seem willing to put the sort of effort into ensuring that it runs correctly that they are indeed willing to put into the console versions of the game that they release. So, yeah. It is not surprising. Just very unfortunate and indeed, to reiterate, disappointing. Almost got hit by a tail there, that was good. Um, it was good that I didn't get hit by it. I'm about to get hit by it anyway. The turn was delayed, not prevented. And I still failed to make evasive maneuvers. I just feel like I'm not contributing very much with these dual blades. I regret my decision to use this loadout. I'm enjoying having the ability to resist the roars, but I 
don't think there's anything else that I'm enjoying about this. I think I can possibly gather some max potions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to consume one of my personal max potions, and then I'm going to gather some from here. I don't know if I can get potions or anything like that, but definitely easy max potions can be acquired from this gathering node. Oh, first aid meds, there you go. I obviously didn't gather at this node when I realized that I didn't have any healing wares because I was nowhere near it. Oh, let's get to that head. I don't know why I'm consuming a first aid med despite having full health. That's really squandering the free items that I'm being given in this quest. Well, don't demon dance again. <sighs> like I said, the sharpness for these dual blades is pathetic. Maybe it's just normal. Maybe it's not that bad for dual blades and I'm just not used to losing sharpness so quickly. Oh, this is not good. Oh, so close. I am still bouncing from the legs, so this is, I suppose, what you would call the Diamoralis armor mode. A bit of a Fatalis theme. I don't know if theme is the word. I think there's another word that I'm looking for there. Characteristic, that's what I would say. Flailing inanely, dealing precisely no damage. In some cases that's steel blades in a nutshell, but uh, there are ways around that. It has to do with positioning yourself in a way that's not shit. Here we go, head opportunity again, but I think I'm not going to be able to reach it. Mm, no, not really. I will just settle for the wings, upon which I am bouncing. My stamina is also quite pathetic, so... Yeah, not the most comfortable Morales quest that I've ever done. No, not the tail. Fuck off. I'm sharpening up again because I've noticed. So, I'm sharpening. I just don't want to see blue sharpness right now. It upsets me. I'm attacking the... I suppose you'd call it the smelter. It's better to call it the smelter than calling it the... Uh, the big circular part on the base of the tail. I mean, that's... I'm sure there are better and more articulate ways to describe it, but still, like, the smelter... just makes sense to me. I'm aiming for it because it's obviously a part of the body that is consistently soft. It's a reasonable weakness zone, I think. And, um, yeah, just makes me feel better about myself. As a Dual Blades user in a quest that I really sort of regret using Dual Blades in. I hope my positioning is fine with the microphone. Hello, A Gaming. Mm, I'm, I'm, I don't think there's a way for me to avoid that. It's always the wings that get me with that. Because if you avoid the body, you are... Or rather, if you're narrowly avoiding the body with that body slam attack, you are unlikely to clear the wings because they are freaking wide. I like how it looked like I was in range, but I really wasn't, and once again, I was flailing my arms for no particular benefit whatsoever. Yeah, I'm gonna get in there. Hit those arms. Plus chest. Um... One thing that I don't think I've actually mentioned at all on camera has been the loss of Citra. 
not the complete loss of Citra, I guess you could say the castration of Citra. Due to, um, the whole Yuzu situation. Um, ironically, I actually downloaded the latest version of Citra Nightly just days before it all went down. So I don't have to go looking for Citra anywhere. As far as the um, connections are concerned with Citra, it's still possible, it's just much less convenient. But I think... Um, I don't know if Citra is going to be taken up and then built upon by third parties, or if new emulators will be made. I don't know what the future actually holds for 3DS emulation. It's not over, that's for sure. If anyone thinks this is a nail in the coffin of 3DS emulation, you would be terribly mistaken. And I don't think anyone is positing that view, but if they were, they should reconsider immediately and withdraw those opinions. Um, it's just I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what the future looks like at this stage. Um, obviously, I'm going to continue using Citra because it's well established. Um, it's working still. So let's just go with that. There were people theorizing that those hosting servers for Citra were somehow at risk of being targeted by Nintendo. I don't think that there's any risk of that. I think that would be extraordinary if Nintendo took legal action on people like that. So I think it's more whoever is distributing the software. And besides, Citra was more of a, um, it was like collateral damage, the loss of Citra. It wasn't directly related to the suit, I don't think. I do have some Morales stuff that I'd like to sell because I do have a bit of excess. Is that everything? Yeah. I've got 19 Dire Dragon Gems. Zor's turn, says Cole. Okay. Hello, says the guild lady in a very strange voice. I will choose one of the advanced quests just for the HRP. To Ivory Lag Eucharist. Hello, P. Berry. I am feeling a little bit better. I don't know how I sound, actually. I probably sound reasonably fine, but if it seems like there's a... Every single time someone mentions that, like they say, Oh, you might be able to tell that I've got a cold, or... Or something like that. I usually can't tell. Um, so I don't know if it's actually audible in my voice or not. But, you know, I'm mostly fine now. It's good to be back. Uh, what was I? Oh yeah, so... A Gaming says that there will be new emulators. Obviously my concern with that is that... Unless very quickly the um, the same level of compatibility can be reached with the new emulators for Monster Hunter. This is a huge step backwards. So I'm not going to be moving on from Citra until there is something that is of equivalent quality. I'd say that's all fairly obvious, um, what I've just said. But yeah, maybe, you never know, maybe something better than Citra can be developed and... You know, the doors have been opened for that now that Citra is more or less out of the picture. Not completely gone, but... Again, the accessibility of it, I think, will always be limited as a result of what's happened. And obviously it's not going to be developed anymore. So, no more support, no more improvements. So I think it will inevitably fall to another group of people to make an emulator that will one day surpass Citra. We'll see what happens. But emulation is a tricky business. There's a process to it. There's so many things that need to actually be ironed out over a long period of time. 
that I just don't expect anything to be better than Citra anytime soon. And that is doubly the case for Monstander, because Monstander is even more finicky than your average 3DS game. So, yeah, Citra is the way it's going to be for me. So, we've got some good damage. We've got Tavo Show using the best Dragon Gunlance in the game, and Cole using probably the most effective slime weapons in the game. Or slime weapon, I guess we'll say. My temptation is always to use the plural form when referring to dual blades, but we'll just say it's a weapon. It's a weapon type. Um, maybe I'll just use that phrase. So, Cole is using the best slime weapon type in the game, except for the Kelby Deer Shot, but quite frankly, I don't want to see him using the Kelby Deer Shot anyway. <clears throat> Hello, potato. So, obviously, one thing to this strategy that is important for me is ensuring that I do have peak performance in an effect whenever I'm shooting my dragon shots. I'm usually not too worried about it for the fire shots, but for the dragon shots, I just want maximum damage because, yeah, if you focus your strategy on dealing as much damage as you can with these shots, it will reduce the length of time that the hunt will be going on for considerably. Shooting them up towards the back spikes because of the high elemental weakness of the back spikes. You could call them the shell shockers if you want, in much the same way that I was referring to the Diamoralis swirly round part on the base of the tail as the smelter because of the drop. I could also refer to those as the shell shockers, but uh, Anyway. The team is really far from the monster right now, which is not great, because it's just me and the monster right now. That doesn't really stand up to scrutiny. The monster should actually just attack any of us, no matter how far away we are from the monster, but it makes me feel like I am the preferred target when I'm the only one close by. <sighs> All right. Obviously keeping away from the twisters. The most important thing with your dragon shots is not to miss any of them. Because you have such a small number of them that missing one of them, in percentage terms, is going to be a huge loss of damage. Well, loss of damage, loss of damage you could have dealt, I guess. Get the hell away from that. If you end up in the crook of his neck like that, you can actually get pushed into the body-centric electric attack. Don't know how many people have used the term body-centric in the history of the English language, but it's probably not my preferred phrase. <laughs> Sounds like something you'd hear in a a New Age Pilates VHS tape. I know that because uh, my mother had a few of those. <laughs> anyway. No! There's not much I could have done under those circumstances. Abysmal laggy occurs. Yeah, I kind of agree. I just don't enjoy the fight. It's because it's underwater only. I get no reprieve from the experience of fighting underwater. Twelfth most popular monster, really. I guess it's, you know, a vote about the monster on a conceptual level, not a vote based on the experience of fighting the monster, which is fine. Again, all of these factors 
are valid. I think I broke the back spikes with my final shot. Oh, never mind. It wasn't my final shot. How about that? You keep away from me. I actually managed to iframe that. Can you believe that? Managed to use the large evasion maneuver. That's a really stupid way to describe it. The large evasion maneuver. Fucking hell. You can tell that... You can see why I was not actually tasked with being on the translation team. But anyway... Get out of there. <laughs> but yeah, I actually managed to iframe that attack, which was good news. A good outcome, we'll say. Oof, that's a that's a fruity word, outcome. Ooh. I don't like to use that word, and I'll tell you why. It's one of those really bullshit words that you'll hear, like, I don't know, some sort of... Um, PR person or a politician, you know, they'll say, outcomes, outcomes, oh, ugh, it makes my skin crawl. I mean, I use pretty fruity language, but that's, that's the business right there. If you want to sound like an absolute git, just describe anything as an outcome, not a result, not anything that's really tangible or substantial, just say, outcomes. <laughs> oh, God. You know, I will describe the fact that I've actually brought my, um, my potions to this quest. I'll describe that as, you know, a strategy leading to favorable outcomes. I just hate that word. I can't believe it came out of my mouth. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. That's probably gonna... Oh no, it didn't hit me because it hit Cole. Fortunately, the point at which it exploded outwards was quite far away from my position. Cole is having a bad time. I don't think I have anything to heal him with. I'm so sorry. I, I feel like you're in desperate need of help, but I can't render any assistance whatsoever. No. I could see that that was coming after me. The risk was clear. You can see why it's so important, so important that I use peak performance because I am obviously laboring under the disadvantageous negative affinity of my bow gun, so Having peak performance will actually make that a little bit less of a problem. It's not going to completely balance out the demerit. <coughs> but. Mm -hmm. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Could have been worse, also could have been better, but I think for three people that's pretty reasonable. Believe it or not, if you play really well, you can actually clear this quest in that same amount of time. With my loadout, solo. <laughs> but I, I guess I just don't play that well, do I? I can only apologise to my dear viewers. Can I get a dynamo, please? So that I can... Like, just before the game goes offline forever. Can I please get a dynamo? Zor's turn. Says Cole. Okay. Can do. I shall post something. It won't be a laggy cruise, I can assure you that.
No dynamo. That's something that I'll miss. The sound of my disc loading in my Wii U when the reward screen shows up. That was one of the things that I missed about the PSP. It's just one of those silly things. I mean, there's a lot of things that I really shouldn't miss about PSP Monster Hunter. <clears throat> the most obvious thing being that fucking claw that you used to have to do. Very uncomfortable. I can vouch for that. But um, one thing that I did miss when emulating was the sound of the UMD loading when you would be in a loading screen. It was a very consistent sound. It would always make the same sound. It was two tones. So, yeah. And then if it was loading for a long time, it would do the tones again. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I do miss that a little bit. Still remember it very well. Alright, what are we going to do? I'm not going to organise this damn inventory now. Feel the heat. Sea of flame, feel heat. A burnt offering. Power couple. Let's do power couple. I typed PNK instead of pink. Hopefully that's still clear enough. Oh, I don't know about that, P Berry. Uh, when you type it like that, it sounds a lot more clunky than it actually is. So one of them is more of like a, a eh sound, and then there's a whir. It's like eh. Like that. Doesn't sound like that. It definitely doesn't sound like bees. Doesn't sound like bees. Which might sound a little bit like what I just did. It's not a buzzing sound. It's like a whir. Like a... a j z I keep doing that, that z sound. But, but it's that's the best way that I can create the whir. Like, you know, I'm not a... I'm not a thing that is whirring. So I can't really create that sound, but yeah, there's not nothing like a like a chuck, 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 which is what I'm reading in the chat. That's no. If you're getting <laughs> if you're getting that sound, um, there might be a problem with your UMD. Oh, unless you're talking about the um, if you're talking about the Wii U. And the sounds that it makes. That's probably closer to a... Like a... Which... Um, again, I say closer to... this is That's not an exact reproduction of the sound. I, I need to stress that. Um, yeah, I'll go Lance, why not? Or are we going to do the Awaken thing again? Am I going to do Awaken Lance instead? Am I that hopeless? Am I hopelessly obsessed? Yeah, I'm hopelessly obsessed. No, don't make, don't do it again. This is a quest where the primary weakness, once again, is dragon. I'm not, no, I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. I'm not doing another Devil Joe weapon. This is absurd. Am I going to bring the Altaeus Gloralis, really? Well, I suppose I don't have to be elementally effective. I can bring something else. Here we go. I've got a good idea. Let's do Awaken Lance slash Gun Lance, which is, you know, my Lance set as well. Fairly obviously. I really didn't need to mention that. That's very uh, superiorogatory. Um, let's bring the Rising Tempest. Got a bit of sediment in here. Is it blueberry sediment? That is the question. What are you giving me? VE ticket. Victory in Europe ticket. Very good. Power couple. I must eat. 
Now, of course, this lance in the games that preceded this one was your go-to raw lance in general. That is to say that you didn't need any element on the damn thing, and it was one of the best weapons that you could possibly use. Well, how about you take that weapon and give it a fat amount of slime, which is the most broken status in the series. Uh, yeah, what you get as a result is this fucking weapon. It's obscene. Um, it's got negative 20% affinity. I don't know if it was that low or that high. What do you say? Um, I don't know if the negative affinity was that high in previous versions, but seriously, like, this is... This is a dirty weapon. Dirty, dirty weapon. And, um... Makes me feel good. Not in the sort of way that the Kelby Deer Shot would make me feel good, but... Yeah. Might get rid of these Victory in Europe tickets. Okay. Don't have anything to mine now. Not really. Well, I couldn't, even if I wanted to. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, which one are we fighting first? Mr. Azure Rathalos. Unfortunately, because this is an area with running water, the frame rate is fucking atrocious. It's really bad. I managed to get his wing with that. That's extraordinary. I was not expecting to act. As soon as I saw him flying in the air, I was not expecting that paintball to make contact. But it did. Hmm. Couldn't quite get my counter out fast enough, though. It's really hard to play this game when it's running at fucking 15 FPS. Oh, look. The Goyle friend has arrived. Ugh, look what you're making me do. This monster is down and I'm having to deal with your roar. I don't really know what to do with myself right now. Fortunately, I was not put in the position where I was hit by that fireball. That would have been really unfair. Is that a... That is definitely a tail flip, which fortunately was not on my position. Tarbo Show is in a terrible predicament. Not much that I can do to assist, because as we have established, I do not actually bring life powders. Would not for one moment blame Tarbo for dying under those circumstances. Go away! She fucking repositioned three times. Or turned three times to hit me there. I can't see shit. Well, I can see shit, just not much shit. Oh, you... You're taking the piss now, lady. I'm actually at risk of dying now. I... I suppose what I really should have done is just stayed behind my shield the entire time. If... I think the problem with Tavo and I is that we're using weapon types where we're pretty much stuck in one place if we're attacking with it. Something with a bit more mobility would really help. Um, Cole is in the same situation. I mean, I think he's about to die. Look, mate, what I would recommend is, yeah, he has disengaged and that is the right thing to do. <laughs> this is not turning out well. Who is the bare-chested hunter? To whom do you refer? That was a flash bomb of some description. Well, I don't carry dung bombs, you see. I, I wish that I had them. 
in this fight now. I almost feel bad that I was the one who posted this quest. I feel largely responsible for this situation. How did I get hit by that shit? Is it because... Oh, okay. You see, even though my weapon is very strong, I don't feel like I've actually been able to build up any of my slime or really deal any damage. Um, also, yes, Peaberry, this is a freaking large Azure Rathalos. Look at the size of him. Okay. Fortunately, you didn't actually interrupt my sharpening, though. Ah, very good. What a chaotic fight. And it's happening in the worst possible area. I wish that we didn't engage the Azure. I wish that we had gone behind the waterfall, into the cave, and fought Pink. Let's pursue... Let's actually pursue the Azure Rathlos. It's very important that we spend as little time as possible fighting two at the same time. And this Azura Rathalos is a little bit worse for wear. Let's take advantage of that. I didn't make contact at all with those thr- Fuck off! Yes, I know you're very proud, but you shouldn't be. He can keep that Psycho Serum. I've had enough. I'm not going to allocate that much fucking time. Okay, I will now. <clears throat> Motherfucker. I'm not going to allocate that much effort to getting my Psycho Serum back. What a bastard creature. Alrighty. Am I actually going to have an opportunity to hit this monster reasonably? Tavo almost got destroyed for using bounce bombs there. Oh great, another Melanx has spawned. Seriously, the prick steals my Psycho Serum. And then respawns. Surely he's had enough. Were the spoils of my pouch insufficient to sate your fucking unpleasant desires? Fucking kleptomaniac. Alright. Hold on. I don't know if kleptomaniacal is a, is a word, but I was going to say kleptomaniacal desires, but then thought, ah, uh, we don't know if that's a word, then we? we don't know. I suppose it must be. I've just never used it before. No, <laughs> no, oh, I just, like, that must have been the last frame of that counter. Must have been. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I iframed that with a back hop, but it smelt like it, didn't it? It smelt like a back hop iframe. Well. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to make use of that shock trap. Can you believe that that Azure Rathos has already despawned? I can't believe that. If it weren't for the fact that it has happened before my very eyes, I would not believe it. Unbe well, I was about to say unbelievable. <laughs> 
just as an expression of, you know, incredulity. Which would be very repetitious of me to say. Not that way, mate. If you don't have some, <laughs> I was about to say, if you don't have psychoserums, then that's unfortunate. But perhaps they were stolen by the Mellings, we don't know. We don't know. I cannot assume. Fucking hell. This has been a rough hunt. <coughs> That's what we need. Oh. That's precisely what we need. And a tail cut. Excellent. I like how the fucking tree got destroyed at the same time that that happened. That was really cinematic. really helpful to counter that sort of thing because obviously I'm placed in a position where I can continue thrusting but I would be thrusting completely off target so oh here we go kill her destroy her annihilate her existence ensure that her very life force is expunged okay I carved a mantle Um, I'll make her unalived. Yes, that's one way of putting it as well. I don't know why I'm you're lamenting my lance counters, Nagakuka. Tavo's turn. Cole is being really helpful. He's... He's helping us with the sequential reality of positions 1, 2, and 3 in our room. You know, the fact that if it goes from Cole to me, and then to the third guy, that means... I've got two mantles, that's incredible. That must have been from the counter. Turns out that if you get a really well-timed counter, you get showered with rare items. That's... Now... A fact that is on the record. Um, this guy really is going a little bit too far. Constantly telling us whose turn is next. I mean, this can be ascertained without difficulty just by fucking looking at the user list. We've done enough quests now to work this out. Oh, it's Mark! I don't know Mark. I just want to make that very clear. But um, now things have gotten really complicated. We've needed help keeping track of whose turn it is next. With three people in the room. Imagine four. Even Cole's going to struggle now. He's going to have to get a pen and paper. Anyway. Am I selling this shit? No, I can't sell. What would be really nice is if I could sell from my pouch, but that wouldn't really make sense. Well... No, it should. I was about to say, oh, it does make sense that you can sell from pouch from the box because re in reality, who are you selling to? But then that begs the question, how does it make sense that I can sell from the box? Whom am I selling my wares to under those circumstances? Am I... <laughs> am I selling them to the box itself? Is the box actually a vendor? Holy shit. That's some monster under law. Because if you think about it, that doesn't really make sense, does it? Like, I can't sell from my pouch, and which, let's just say, makes logical sense. Why? Oh, this is a four-person arena quest. Very good. Um, happy to do that. Let me just deal with my wares. 
not buy a center box cell. Anyway, um, my contribution to the law, you know, the the world building, the the canon of Monster Hunter is that the item box is actually a vendor. Rathian Mantle, I have 11 Rathian Mantles. Let's do an arena quest. Don't know why we're doing Pink Rathian again, but all right. <coughs> There's a tiny Khajiit in every item box, very good. Yeah, maybe I'm the vendor. Alright, so Pink Rathian. What do I want to bring? Probably the gun. That might be an excessive title for a Giganox bowgun. Can we just appreciate for a moment that the Giganox bowgun is called Immortal... Oh, sorry, I read that as Immortal God. It's actually Immortal Jail. Um, never mind. Immortal Jail is probably acceptable, but Immortal God... That's what I first read. That was on account of the fact that I didn't read it correctly. Sorry. Literally removed one of the letters. Well, I did a lot of things to that word to make it say God instead of jail, but anyway. So, what have we got? We've got poison shots. <laughs> really? Poison shots against a pink Rathian? I'm going to assume that that does damage, otherwise they wouldn't have given me a gun that shoots poison. Unless it's a trick. Are they tricking me? Maybe it is a trick. I don't have any max... Oh, I, I have a max potion. Yeah, I'll use it. Oh, come on. I accidentally changed my ammunition thing. Now I've lost my load. I've lost my load. Like I'm a forklift driver. All right. Can I... Oh, all right. It falls to me to detonate. But it was done anyway. <laughs> Alright. And she's poisoned. I'm not shooting any exhaust. That is not happening. I can see that we have heavy right-leaning deviation. We've also got negative affinity, so I don't know about this loadout, but... Anyway. Doom Link, you're off target. Oh no, I'm not. Oh no, I'm not. Mm. That takes some fucking skill, like hip firing with right deviation. Or any high deviation, really. You know what I'm glad that they got rid of? L and R deviation, where it fucking zigzags like crazy. That. That upset me. Back and try. I think they got rid of it. Maybe it's in this game as well and I just haven't seen it. That's possible. Tavo's fucking using the chack chack. Or maybe it's the gimbal guy. I don't know. But anyway. Oh sorry, the wagga wagga. Goodness me. It couldn't be the chack chack. That's ridiculous. It's either the wagga wagga. Or the gimbal guy. Now, I don't know why they went from Chak Chak to Wagga Wagga to Gimbal Gaia. But, uh, anyway. That was a very definitive conclusion to the fight. That's a dead fucking dragon. <laughs> gimbal sounds like a slur. You fucking gimbal. Yeah, I can see that. really good. I'm so frustrated that this is not a game where I can remove the heads up display just to look at the end screen because that's really funny. <laughs> it looks like 
Looks like she's crying, like she's reacting to the flash bomb. Because it's so bright. Because you can see her eyes are clamped shut. Killed by a flash bomb, right there. Um, to say that we S-ranked that fight would be an understatement. How could it be six minutes if the number of people you can have in the quest is four? How could that possibly be reasonable? Anyway, um, there you go. That's a really funny end screen. <laughs> uh, thank you for that visual, Potato. I guess that's what you uh, what you think about when you're not watching a Doom Link live stream. Well, it turns out that's also what you're thinking about when you're watching a Doom Link live stream. So. No, you've activated Mark now. He wants to do Arena. Very good. I don't know how many of these I've done myself. Who needs to prepare for a quest when you're already given a loadout? What do we got? That's a cool name for a fucking greatsword. Um, I can't pronounce it. Something like Lyosalfa. Lyosalfa. Something like that. It was most assuredly pronounced incorrectly, but it was an attempt. Oh, this is a throwback. Galaxy Cannon. It used to be called the Meteor Cannon. I, at one time in Freedom Unite, I did use it as my normal heavy bow gun. It was the Meteor Cannon G. As I recall, it needed like 30 meld spar ore. Which was fucked up. Um, anyway. Oh, I, ha I might have to use the Plesioth Hammer. I think I have to use the Plesioth Hammer. It's a giant Plesioth head, so... That's not really something that I can just walk away from once I see it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> There's three of us. We all saw the Plesioth head and got extremely excited. Um, I hope none of us had smoke bombs, by the way. Anyway. There's going to be a bit of hammering going on in this quest. Does anyone have an ice weapon? I suppose not. Um, who should we start with? Looks like the general consensus is Nibble Snarl. Come on, oh god. He's not really interested in ours. Well, he's interested in coal. Ugh. There we go. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Alright, let's play a little better. If I can anticipate getting hit by that, I shouldn't be then going through with it. Negate stamina use is pretty helpful. Not if I'm getting immediately hit anyway. Alright, turn around you big sand bastard. Really want to get... Yes, that's what I want. I wanted a nice... KO. Ooh. I think I'm out of range of that. Very good. I don't know how good this hammer actually is. What is my water hammer in this game? Oh yeah, it's the... Jamaran Hammer, which is almost assuredly a better choice than this, but... Well, what are the stats? 
Nah. Definitely Gemma Ran Hammer. But this might not be the fully upgraded version. I don't know. I'm not fishing you out, you bastard. Don't have time for that. Oh! That was possibly the most perfect combo I've ever seen between two monsters. That was incredible. So I got hit by the Uragan, which was already putting me at risk. But then I got hit with Tremor, which perfectly coincided with the attack from the Nibble Snuff. The Nibble Snuff attack, of course, I did anticipate, but I was not expecting a fucking tremor from the Uragan. That was a bit nasty. <clears throat> um, I do have paralysis knives. I mean, we all have paralysis knives, those of us with the hammer. So, I will throw them on the Uragan once this nibble snuff is dead. I'm just conscious that if I use the paralysis knives, it's important that we all take advantage of it. And if there are two monsters that are here, we're less likely to be able to take advantage. Because some people might not be focused on the monster that we need to be focused on. There we go. I'll go for the arms and then you guys can go for the head. Very good. Excellent leader. Let's try to break the face. Or break the chin rather. Can't do much about that. Huh? This is a fun quest, though. Sharpening my hammer, thinking that the sharpness level is too low, but that's actually the starting sharpness level of the hammer. So... It's a bit awkward. Yeah, I'm not very impressed with this. Ah, there we go. There's our weak point. It's going to be nice and soft and also weak. A broken chin against three hammer users is a death sentence for an Uragan. That was probably not fair. <laughs> Especially considering that I was still not in range to get that off. So, literally, all I achieved there was hitting my teammate. Nice. Peaberry seems to prefer this hammer because it's funnier. I don't know. I guess it is funnier. If my hammer set had sharpness plus one, which I don't think it does, I probably would use this hammer, but pretty positive that that set does not have sharpness plus one. And again, it might be possible that this is not a fully upgraded version of the hammer, but anyway. I just have a distinct feeling that is con that it is considerably worse than the Fang Hammer Ruin, whatever it's called, I don't know. Why do I not have a Farcaster? When did I use that? What? I don't remember using a Farcaster. Oh, it was stolen from me by Melinx. A Latrion demands coal. Okay. I suppose we can do that. What should I use? Could use something... I could use paralysis. I never did actually make the scarecrows in this game. Interesting. I was looking to see if I had the paralysis dual blades. But I never made them. 
I wonder if I can. I'm almost certain that I can't. I think it needs um, Shakalaka tickets, which I do not have. I don't even know how you upgrade into them. I suppose you can't forge them outright. You have to upgrade into them through some kind of path. And I definitely haven't undertaken that process, so that's alright. I was thinking paralysis might be nice, but... <sighs> I'm just thinking of something that would make the fight fun. I've done so much Alatrion that every single fight almost... I feel like I have to drag myself into the confrontation. No matter what. I'm never going to enjoy it. So. Not anymore. It's just I've done too many of them. So, What would make it a little bit fun, at least? A little bit fun. What's being said in the chat? Try and break horns, please. I'm sorry, but if you're departing on an Alatrion quest with a greatsword, you are in absolutely no position to request the horns to be broken. In my opinion, you have to at least contribute in some way to breaking the horns, if you want them broken. So, you know, breaking the horns of an Alatrion requires a very specific strategy. You know, something that's actually going to allow the head to be aimed for consistently enough to break the horns. The point is, if he needs Sky Swayers, he's going to need both horns broken. So, you can't just do that. You can't fluke that. There is a specific strategy that's required, and he's not contributing to it at all by using that. So, to be honest, I don't think I'm going to bring anything that will make it easier for him. Like, I could bring a hammer, but one hammer is probably not going to be enough either. So, too bad. He can just sit there and live in a fantasy land where, I don't know, we're going to break both horns. Even though we're definitely not going to do that. Alright, I'll bring a hunting horn, why not? Time Ball Demolisher, is that going to be appropriate for the loadouts that they have? Because I think this is an elemental attack boost. Oh, it's Affinity Up plus Health Recovery. Hmm. Not sure about this Hunting Horn, to be honest. I'll bring it. That's one thing that I almost never bring to an Alatrion fight. A Hunting Horn. So this will make it fun. I'll just go for stamina, I guess. Hello? What's going to give me stamina? Is it this? Fucking nothing, apparently. Alright, let's just do this, then. Yeah, this is a translucent weapon. It's pretty cool. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ready up. This is just so that these guys can actually fight the Elatrion. I need to go to the bathroom. But what I'll do is, I will far cast at the beginning of the hunt, and then stay at camp. Then I'll come back in a little bit later. <laughs> Not much later, obviously. But, um, yeah. I will have to actually double check to see how to play the songs on this horn. I've not used this horn in so long. I don't even know if you guys have seen me use this hunting horn. Take this. That's probably not something people are used to seeing. <laughs> Someone far casting immediately. I'll be back in a moment.
here we go. So we've got record bathroom. He poopin. He's defecating. Emptying his bowels, dropping his kids off at the pool. And in the meantime, Nagakuka is trying to eat choco biscuits. Anything but the poop nuggets? I mean, you guys seriously have completely lost your composure in my absence. This is unseemly. Like, this is actually the most disgusting chat I've ever had. Oh, a bit of decorum at this stage is sorely needed. All right. Now to contribute to the hum. Oh, yes. I need to figure out how to actually play these damn songs. All right, so we've got Affinity Up and Hearing Protection. Those are pretty much the only ones that I'm going to be playing. So it's green, orange, purple, orange. Okay. Let's start with that. Now, green, fuck if I know how to play that. Here we go. So green, orange, purple, orange. Shut up, dragon. Alright, so this is going to be a bonus for the affinity up. And extra small something or other, I don't know. Um, what's the other one? So, orange, orange, green. Must sound truly ridiculous for me to be saying these colours like this, but anyway. Alright, so, if it starts off at large for hearing protection, the bonus must increase... It must increase the duration. No, it doesn't. There is no bonus. I cannot encore that into anything of benefit. So, it's just hearing protection large, and that is it. That's the extent of it. Alright. So, obviously, the greatest benefit to this hunting horn that I have, other than the songs that it plays, is the slime build-up that it will have on the monster. So I will try to hit the monster as much as I can to get that slime build up. Glad I didn't get hit by any of that shit. That was a bit dangerous. How am I still at green? I feel like I've hit you a lot. Maybe it's because my slime amount is... No, 350 should be pretty good. Oh, very nice. We've broken one horn. Sorry. I'm, I'm genuinely sorry. If you had gotten a level 3 charge off on that head, that would have been much better than whatever I did in that moment. Unless, of course, I got a slime explosion on the head. That would have been pretty cool. But there was no... Um, imminent likelihood of that happening for the reason that I was still in the green hadn't even reached orange yet so I do extend my heartfelt apologies for having very negatively impacted your intentions uh, I, I don't really have much to say about that there was actually a logic to what I was doing there, but I actually ended up perfectly positioning myself to have the monster land on my face. I don't even think I've actually managed to get a single slime explosion. I don't have null berries, I need to go and get some. You can actually gather them in this location. So, I'm going to do that now. I'm helping a lot. Two we'll just have to do for now. 
Is someone using wide range null berries? Looks like it. Alright, so what's the fucking affinity song? It's... <laughs> Do I have to check every time? Oh, God. Green, orange, I don't know. It's green, orange, purple, orange, okay. Alright. I think I healed them with that, so that's always exciting. I don't know if anyone is actually benefiting from the earplugs, so I'm not going to play it again. I'm just going to focus on building up my slime. I can see that Tarvo's using paralysis. That's a little bit unfortunate because that means there are two of us who are effectively going support. Okay, I just got a slime explosion. But, yeah, that's not great. Two people going support is really fucking ill-advised when our damage dealers are both using Greatsword. <laughs> I mean, Greatsword's fine, it's just... I don't know. I'm not sure about that. How many of us are in position to hit the head? Not enough of us, clearly. I was really far away. Anyway. Not sure about this fight. I'm about to get a fucking claw in the face. I could smell it. But I guess I smelt wrong. <laughs> Alright. Fucking Elatrium. <sighs> Can you believe it that I've just about reached the point where I'm sick of this monster? Like, actually sick of this monster, to the point where I don't even want to fight it anymore. Do you know why? It's because now that I've gone back to Monster Hunter Try, and I've been playing that game with people. Believe me. The amount of Alatrion that people want to do, whew, You can see why, but fucking hell. I've had enough of this monster. You know, this is now my third return to try. And obviously I've played this game. I've played Portable 3rd. And Generations Ultimate. Like, how much fucking Elatrion do you want me to do? Guys. I'm sick of it now. <laughs> I'm actually at the end of my tether. I can barely... keep myself sane while hunting this monster. I think I managed to get a KO, which is excellent news. Excellent for the team. They did it. They broke both horns. Good on them. My choice to bring a KO weapon type was, you know, I didn't want to bring a hammer, so I brought a hunting horn. <laughs> Slightly spiteful of me to have done. But it still helped them in the end, which is good. And Tava shows dead. Is that our second fane or our first? Our first. That's fine. Oh. I was bouncing a bit there. More than a bit. It, it, there are no gradations of bouncing. You either bounce or you don't. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Um, Nagaku Ka, you can't really flash this monster in this version of the game. You can, technically, but you need extremely precise timing. You can see that there is siege weaponry, and that is basically your flash.
I like how you're begging for us to throw flash bombs, despite the fact that we have repeatedly hit this monster with siege weaponry. But yeah, um, the presence of the siege weaponry is basically in replacement of flash bombs. If you try to flash this monster, you're going to have a really difficult time. It is possible, but it's very hard. So, and I don't, I actually don't know precisely how to do it in this game, but in try and portable third, it's very easy to do. How did that still hit me? That is insane. That's incomprehensible. At that angle, that attack still reached me. Absolutely extraordinary. Alright, can I remember how to play that fucking song? I think it's... Green, orange, purple, orange? I think so. Yeah, it is. Don't interrupt me, Electric. Stop it! You have to play that shit again. Okay. Stop. Whatever you're doing, stop it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm not really contributing that much to this fight, but I'm having fun at least. And I know it sounds selfish of me, but that's kind of the most important thing right now. <laughs> like, it's going to be a slower hunt, but fuck it. I just, I can't bring myself to bring a serious loadout to this monster anymore. I can't do it. Gotta love this netcode error with Alatrion in this version. Ow. Every time someone posts a Latreon in Monster Hunter Try, I actually groan. I verbally and very vocally groan. And then I do it, you know. But I'm so sick of it. I don't begrudge them the need to do a Latreon. <laughs> that was a very cool way to kill him. <laughs> oh, very dramatic. All right, Alatrion, I get it. You're dying. Fine. There's no need to throw your head back. What a ridiculous spectacle. Anyway. Yeah, drama queen. Oh my god! Mum, get the camera, I carved a pallium. Two palliums and two mantles in one quest. Oh my god. Why does your head look so small? I'm being eaten. I'm going to drink this one straight from the can, because otherwise I'm going to be mixing blueberry sour with alcoholic ginger beer, which is... Uh, no. I will abstain. What have I got? Fast charge plus three, and guard up plus four, one slot. Garbage. Huntering 557, and quite frankly, despite the fact that Tavo Sho was not really going damage himself, and I was <laughs> doing something, I don't know if it was contributing or what, um, it didn't take all that long. It was okay. The result was pretty acceptable. Alright. So, I'll do one more hunt. Ah! Says the lady. 
can you stop making noises? Maybe not the last one. But definitely the first two. Zor's turn. Oh, lucky last. What a privileged situation I find myself in. Alright. What will be our final quest? Alright, first person in the chat to give me a monster will hunt it. Tell me what you want to see. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's not happening. Um, I don't have time for it, Nagakuka. I mean, technically you were first. You requested event Stygian Zenoga, but that's not happening, so we're going to do Duramaros. I don't have time for it. I genuinely don't. I've got shit to do. Um, it's going to be like a 30-minute hunt. Alright. Um, we could do... How about we do the giant one? Let's do... Because I haven't done that recently. Have not done that recently. Hello. My keyboard died. <sighs> Um, it's going to be giant Rasta Rambrose, but no one is going to be informed of it ahead of time except for Tavo Show, because he is in the live stream and can hear me say it. <coughs> so yeah, that's what we're going to do. I suppose I'll bring <laughs> a bow. Is it going to be... yeah, it'll be Pierce, it'll be... Probably that. Ew. I don't want to use that. Please tell me the Baryoth bow has Pierce on the fourth charge. Ah, oh, suck my dick. Really, I have to... <sighs> One of the things that I hate the most about using a bow in this game is literally being forced to use the shitty Nahabra bows. I can't stand it. Alright, so if I use this... What do I get out of that? What's, what's that business? So I get critical I plus two. With this bow. I guess it's not too bad. This is one of the better examples. One of the less tragic permutations of a Nahabra bow loadout. Tavo says Rust Durambarus, which may confuse people, but... Uh, let's find out where this quest actually is. I don't remember where it is. I think it's... Um, it's definitely... Oh no, it's an event quest. What am I doing? It's an event quest. The Mountain in the Desert. I haven't done this quest in years, actually. It has been years since I last did this quest. Amazingly. <clears throat> it was probably in Doom Link's random hunts when I last did it on camera. Which is pretty cool. I said it was Rusted or Ambrose. Naga Kuka. I can't use power coatings on this bow. On this fucking bow, I can't use power coatings. Look at it! Look at my damage. Fucking hell. No. Alright. No Just gotta live with it. Tavo's using a joke weapon. 
Ugh. It is what it is. Let's, um... Someone's going to tell me the spear tune is actually a good greatsword. I disagree. But... <laughs> um... I don't actually know how to combine for power coding, so let's go on an adventure. Let's see what we... <laughs> Jesus. Well, I know that's going to obviously be that. That's... So that's sleep coatings, that's power coatings, that's paint coating, paralysis, poison. Must be this. Yep, there we go. I could have just checked my combo list, but I'm feeling special today. Wet fish. Okay. Come on, Mark. Where are you, Mark? Don't keep us waiting, Mark. Seriously, I don't have all day. I could have done a fucking Stygian Zenoga in this time. An event Stygian Zenoga. Ugh. Oh. I had a fucking wild dream last night. Oh. And I only sort of remember it. And I was like, deliriously talking to my girlfriend about it before she went to work. And she's like, <laughs> okay. Because I thought I was still in the dream. But anyway. That topic of conversation arose from the fact that my shoulders feel f weird. It's because I slept weird. As a consequence of that dream. Mark, where are you? I've got a live stream to finish. Hurry up. There you are. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's the bamboo bow. Why? Maybe it's actually decent in this game. Bamboo Kaguya. Okay. Hold on. Is that Awaken? <laughs> He's using Awaken <laughs> on a bow. That's excellent. Oh, Mark is Hunter Inc. Triple Nine. That's why he's using Awaken Water Bamboo Bow. You, I think the requirement to use that loadout is that you are Hunter Inc. Triple Nine. That just splashed into my eye. Under extraordinary circumstances that, quite frankly, if you were to lay that out mathematically, very improbable, but it just happened, and it went in my eye. Ow. Alright. <laughs> I like that. Mark says, it might fall asleep. It might. <laughs> um, when you're using the Nahabra bow, you really should bring paralysis coatings. I didn't. One of the benefits to the, the Nahabra bows is that there's like a larger... I don't even know if it's explained here at all. Yes. Coating boosts paralysis. What this means is that you will actually deal your paralysis more effectively if you're using this bow because it has a coating boost. I didn't bring any of those coatings, so... I'm in Egypt. That's the situation. Now this bow looks cool. Nice and colourful. Nice and attractive and all of that business. But, um, yeah, I'd, I would prefer a more robust weapon, personally. Alright. Giant Ruster Ambrose will be in the other large desert area. And he is gigantic. I should make that very clear. I've done this quest in a long time, but he, he's big. <laughs> I 
think I heard the sound of my arrows bouncing there. Well, not bouncing, but... Oh, he's asleep. Oh, apparently we're bombing the... Neither the hump nor the head. I'm not sure about this bomb positioning, but anyway. Oh, Cole's doing a charge attack. Goodness gracious. That was a thing. It's a, a very interesting a form of self-punishment to use a greatsword against a giant rusted rambrose, but maybe it'll work out for you. For both of you. I feel like I'm firing an arrow up Mount Everest when I'm aiming for these fucking humps. Ow. Well, let's take advantage of this. It's funny because he barely fits in the trap, but anyway. Well, he doesn't fit in it. <laughs> Categorically does not fit in the trap, but he's in it. It's a bit like World Eater Devil Joe in the Pitfall Trap. I'll get out of your way. Yeah, I think that's probably true, Peaberry. Giant Ruster Ambrose, largest non-siege monster. Probably. There we go. More close range coatings. I don't really know the details of what close range coating does to the bow. Possibly augments the cutting damage if it uses wet fish. But yeah, it's definitely an increase in damage in some respect. But if power coatings increases the raw damage, then close range coatings must increase the cutting damage. But that doesn't make sense, right? Because surely if it's arrows, it must be shot damage. So maybe it's not cutting damage and I'm being silly. So, yeah. Maybe it just increases the shot damage. And power coatings increases the raw. Which makes sense. Well, no, how does that... No, how does that even... That doesn't make sense. So, your raw damage... Oh god, I'm actually at risk of dying. Look at the- <laughs> this is scary! This is genuinely frightening. Holy shit, I couldn't actually get out of the way of that. He's too big. <laughs> um, okay, so... An increase in your raw damage... Um... That has to link to your... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna say it increases your damage less than power, surely. And it seems to have the prerequisite that you're in close range. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with close range coatings. That is the long and short of it. I may have known at one time, but I have since forgotten those details. I might. See what a giant Durambrose cries. What does he cry? Just a, a large wyvern tier. Not an extra large wyvern tier, just... The same sized tier... That, um... I don't know. A Nurogar would cry. He cries just as much. 
No more, no less. Just the same amount. It's kind of brutal if you think about it, that you, you're actually bringing these monsters to tears. I think in a human way it sounds brutal. But if a monster's crying, is it the same as a human crying, really? I don't know. Probably not. Because they're not operating with the same intellect. Oh god. There was a time when Monster Hunter as a game, and this is probably still the case in a small way, but it was definitely more prevalent in the past. Literally the only other games that had Hunter in the name were actual hunting games where you were shooting deer and stuff. Um, it was just funny to type Monster Hunter like many years ago and you'd start to get, like once you were not getting accurate results it would be hunting games where it was game like you were shooting animals and um, it's just funny that was basically the environment that monster hunter was in in the past it was almost lumped in with those games just because it had hunter in the name or the word hunt yeah, obviously monster hunter is not quite like that <laughs> I can't really relate to a giant rust to Ambrose, but I feel like I wouldn't have the heart to just annihilate some woodland animal. Even in a video game. He's sleeping again. Wow. Two sleeps. We were told that he might sleep. I'll tell you what. That's putting it lightly. Don't do it. It's probably better that we... Well, no, I actually... No, I actually completely disagree with what I just did. I woke him up with that arrow. I should have let him wake up with a greatsword charge. My apology. Hoping that he dies soon. But Durambrose, of course, has a lot of health under regular circumstances, so I imagine this one has even more health. It's nothing like Stygian Zenobia, don't worry. To be honest, I don't know if he has increased health. It would stand to reason that he would have more health, but... I don't know that for sure. I feel like if I'm using bow, it's probably the best way to showcase this monster. You can actually see him. Whereas if you were using Blade Master, you would have to get so close to him that all you would really be able to see would be a bunch of legs. So if I'm recording this fight, <laughs> it's probably better to use something ranged. Oh, that's quite funny. When he started leaving the area, he was not limping. But then, during his travel, he began to limp. You don't see that very often. You need very specific circumstances to get that. Oh, Tavo almost got landed upon.
I think we can kill him in this area. That is unless, because he has high health, the percentage of health when he's limping still leaves us with a lot of health to be taken away. Very good. One of the themes of this quest should be that you just get so many cars that you could never get the maximum amount. Something stupid like 10 or 15. He's huge. Just doesn't make sense that you get the same number of carbs, but anyway. Nice leather pants. Alright. Well, that's basically going to conclude this recording. I don't want this to be the last 3 Ultimate recording, but it might be. Who knows? I genuinely don't know. But it's not well, going to be the last of the... If it were the last, as I say, it wouldn't be the very last on my channel. It would be the last on the Wii U. So, that's what I mean by that. But anyway, I shall bid you all farewell for now. I do thank you all for watching. I'll see you when I'm next recording Monsanto or anything else you'd like to watch. And um, yeah, I've been gone for a while, but hopefully the frequency of recordings will ramp back up. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining. I'll see you next time.